In this video, we're going to talk through the physics of a classic playground pastime, the merry-go-round. You know the fun of riding a classic merry-go-round is spinning as fast as you possibly can and trying to hang on and not fall off. If you're riding on the edge of this thing, the faster you go, the bigger the sum of the forces needs to be that's pointed towards the center. And if you're hanging on to this, you are providing that force with the tension in your arms, or uh, you could think about the normal force of the bar. Well, I went in search of a classic merry-go-round in the name of physics just to have a little bit of fun and to kind of talk through a sample problem relating to circular motion. Well, I didn't find a classic merry-go-round, but at my daughter's elementary school, I found this. This must be the modern day equivalent of a merry-go-round. So to hang on while I move around in a circle, it definitely takes more force to keep myself on there than just hanging straight down. So the question is, how much force does that actually take? If we imagine that my arms are stretching, which they were, as I was moving around in the circular path, the question is, what is the size of the combined tension in my arms when I'm moving in the circular path? And then we could calculate what angle my body makes with the horizontal. So in order to be able to calculate that, we'll need to get a couple measurements first. So we're gonna slow it down a little bit and watch this thing in 1 8 speed. And so the first thing we need to do is figure out how far away my center of mass is from the center of rotation, being that pipe. We can see right here that my body, or the center of mass of my body, which is around my belly button, is approximately 1.4 meters away from that center pipe. And so the center of my mass is making a circular path that has a radius of curvature of about 1.4 meters. The next thing we need to do is figure out in some way how fast I'm moving around that circular path. Well, I'm going to time how much time it takes to, to make one quarter rotation. So we can see here when my body just passes the bar, and once I get to one quarter rotation, the timer is going to stop. And you can see that it takes about 0.69 seconds for one quarter of a rotation. So, I'm going to st I started the timer here. I stopped the timer when my body made it here. So that's one quarter of a rotation of about 0.69 seconds. And the center of my mass, we said, was about 1.4 meters away. With that information and my approximate mass being 65 kilograms, we can answer the questions. A, what is the size of the combined tension in my arms? And what angle does my body make with the horizontal? And B, how does this compare to the tension in my arms if I were just hanging from rest on a set of monkey bars? So if we want to figure out that combined size of the tension force in my arms at that angle, let's, let's say at an angle of theta above the horizontal, let's first make a force diagram. So the only significant forces on me at this instant in time would be the gravitational force of the Earth pulling down on me, and we're going to say the tension in my arms up at this angle theta. If we look at kind of like a component force diagram where we break up the force of tension into its components, we can see that if I'm moving in a horizontal circular path where at this instant in time, I'm not really accelerating vertically at all. That means any forces or components of forces in the y direction must be balanced. So the y component of gravity would have to be the same size as the gravitational force on me. And then we just have the x component of tension left over. And so we could see that the sum of the forces on me at any point is just the x component of tension. And that's always going to be pointed towards the center of the circular path that my body's following or pointed centripetally. We know that if my mass is 65 kilograms, then the gravitational force on me is approximately negative 650 newtons, assuming a gravitational field strength of 10 newtons for each kilogram, which would make the y component of tension positive 650 newtons. So in order to be able to figure out how big the tension force is in my arms, we need to figure out not only how big the y component of tension is, but also the x component of tension. And remember, I'm moving in a circular path, and the x component is the sum of the forces that's pointed towards the center or centripetally. So let's use our circular motion equation to figure out how big the sum of the forces on me must be based on how fast I'm moving and what the radius of curvature is and my mass and that will be the x component of tension. So here's our circular motion equation. The sum of the forces on any object that's pointed centripetally must be equal to the mass of that object moving in a circle 
times its tangential velocity squared divided by the radius of curvature of the path that the object, or in this case, I'm following. Right? Well, we know my mass is 65 kilograms. The center of my mass was about 1.4 meters away from the center of rotation. All we need to do is figure out approximately how fast I'm moving at that instant. Well, let's get an average velocity from the time measurement from before. So the average velocity is going to be displacement divided by time. In the video, we started the timer here and we stopped the timer when my body got about here. And so my displacement is, the, is a quarter of the circumference of the circular path. So the displacement is approximately 0.25 times 2 pi r, r being the 1.4 meters, and time is that 0.69 seconds that we measured. So the average velocity that I was moving at is about 0.25 times 2 pi times 1.4 meters divided by 0.69 seconds. So my displacement was approximately 2.2 meters along this curved path, and it took me about 0.69 seconds to do so. So my average velocity over that time was about 3.19 meters per second. So let's just plug in the values and find out how big the sum of the forces needed to be. So 65 kilograms was the mass, 3.19 meters per second was our velocity. We got to square that divided by the radius of curvature, 1.4 meters. We calculate that out to be about 472 newtons. So the sum of the forces on me must have been about 472 newtons, which is the same size as the x component of tension. So let's now use our known y component of tension and x component to figure out how big the force of tension is, the actual force of tension in my arms, and that angle. Remember, the actual tension force is going to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle, where the x component is one side and the y component is the other side. And so if we want to figure out the length of the hypotenuse, let's just use the Pythagorean theorem. So we take 650 newtons squared plus 472 newtons squared equals the force of tension squared. Solve that for the force of tension and we get about 803 newtons. To figure out what that angle is, we're just going to use the tangent equation. So the tangent of an angle is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. So we get the tangent of our unknown angle is equal to 650 newtons divided by 472, or theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 650 divided by 472, and that turns out to be about 54 degrees from the horizontal. So in the video that we just saw, the combined force, the force that I needed to use to essentially hang on to this thing while it was spinning, was about 803 newtons and my body was making an angle of approximately, we're estimating 54 degrees from the horizontal. The last part of this problem, how does this compare to the tension in my arms if I were just hanging at rest from monkey bars? Well, that's an easy one, right? The force of gravity on me, whether I'm hanging at rest or not, is negative 650 newtons, and there would be a combined tension in my arms of positive 650 newtons. So this is what it would be, just equal to my body weight. So when I'm swinging around, if the tension is 803 newtons, that means that's about 153 newtons more than if I was just hanging from rest, which is approximately 125% compared to the size of my weight.